This is the July Homesteaders of America Garden Tour. We're so glad you're here with us. Let's get right to it. Happy Independence Day. This is where I spent a ton of my independence. It's food freedom in this garden. Let me show you around. So the sweet potatoes have definitely filled out. And as you can see, I'm trailing my cucumbers like I said I would in the pathways. Um, one thing new that I'm gonna do this year that a lot of people commented on last year's sweet potato harvest is the potato vines are edible. The, uh, the vines themselves and the leaves. So as these get just totally out of control, I'm gonna just come in here and harvest them and we'll process them and either eat them fresh or preserve them. Now, it's been a long time since I've harvested lettuce because it's been so hot that the lettuce does turn bitter. So what I'm gonna do, I was successful at it last year. I, I don't think it's guaranteed every year. I'm gonna just keep cutting it back and I will feed it to the chickens to try to keep it from bolting on me and see if I can't get it to last till the fall. The potatoes are looking good, but if you guys caught, um, nope, it hasn't come out yet. I'm going to have a video coming out where I snuck in here and grabbed some young potatoes and I have my doubts. So watch for that video and you'll find out why. I'm gonna see if I can peek in here and find a baby cucumber for you guys. One of the things I'm doing just as a test this year, oh, here's some. Um, Baby cucumber, oh, I just saw a cucumber beetle too. It doesn't look like it got pollinated though properly. One of the things I'm gonna try to do this year and just to see if it makes any difference is I'm cutting leaves that are hiding the flowers so the pollinators can easily see the flowers and do their job. This is at one of my Cherokee purple tomatoes, a first one that I've grown ever this year and it's setting fruit beautifully. I am keeping them pretty well pruned and it does actually need to be staked again one more time. So I brought this with me, guys. This is Velcro tape. It's what I use to... <laughs> it's what I use to um, train up my... Um, anything that needs to be trained up, really. It's a very gentle fabric tape and you can reuse it, save it. It lasts probably two or three years. Now my sweet peas are, um, unfortunately it's just been so hot, they're already dying off at the bottom. So I'm gonna come out here and do a harvest probably over the next couple days, cause I will lose these probably this next week. We're gonna be in the 90s up to the hundreds with heat index all next week. These plants aren't made for that. So they'll give up the ghost. So I have seen a few squash bugs um, not too many though, oddly. So I am killing them when I find them. It's sunset, as you can tell, the rooster's crowing, it's almost time for bed. But guys, look at my brassicas. So if you've been following our channel, I had a huge cabbage moth problem early on, very early on, and got it under control. And now the cabbage moths are just tormenting me, literally flying around by the dozens in my garden. It's almost near impossible to keep up on. I'm out here every day squashing eggs, killing worms. So we're gonna do our best, but they're gonna just start staying ugly from here on out probably. But let me take you down this row. Something's changed here if you missed our last video and I'll give you an update. So back here are all my bush beans. I've got Blue Lake bush beans, turtle beans, Hank's extra special baking beans, and they are still flowering um, and just about to set some green beans. I've seen the beginnings of my first baby beans on them. I have a few beets that are still trying to grow in here where my initial spring planting was, but this is where all my 400 peas were. And I just pulled those out, gave this bed a nice cover of leaves, and it's going to be ready when I'm ready to plant my next fall crop. I walked right by this beautiful tomato and didn't even talk to you guys about it. It's almost as tall as me already. What am I gonna do? This is the golden cherry. And come down here, look what we found. Our first little golden cherry tomato. <gasps> Yay. Ab Todd's absolute favorite to snack on in the garden in the summer. Let's head down now and look at the trellis. So 
So I didn't talk to you about all the tomatoes that we just walked by, but I've got about probably 15 tomatoes down that green bean row. But here are my pole beans. And once pole beans get a certain height, they get kind of stupid on trellising because they just want to grow to the clouds. So I just come out here and tie them around to tell them where to go. Um, I haven't seen any flowers yet on these yet, but they're gonna come. But come down here at my feet, Todd, and I wanna show them something. Look at this. I have a beautiful pumpkin vine that's gonna grow in here with them. And it's doing great training on the trellis, setting off little holds to tie on to. So that's, and it's doing great. It's, I don't know what it is about this one squash vine that's keeping it so protected from bugs, but it's doing great. I did try to plant melons on this mound and they just didn't take. That's unfortunate because that would have been fun to have here. We're about to head down now the west side, which is a whole nother tomato row but I wanna show off this Roma. She's just beautiful, beautiful. Probably my best one that I'm growing. And I think she's absolutely gorgeous. Now here is where I am practicing for the first time training zucchini to grow vertically. So I've only got the four stakes in now. I have two more zucchini that you'll see later that I need to decide if I'm gonna do the same thing with them. But they're doing really well. Look at here, our first little zucchini fruit. So that's exciting. You know what that means. The first zucchini is always made into zucchini bread here. So these tomatoes got a little bit of a short si side of the stick getting started because they were planted behind my garlic. So they're a little shorter than the tomatoes that I had by the um, peas. But the, as you can see, the garlic's out now and this is where I'll be coming back through and planting another fall crop as well. I'm debating, I think I wanna plant carrots here, but I might plant carrots somewhere else. Let's head now to the north side of the garden and show you what's going on in here. So the cilantro and the tatsoi has all gone to seed, flowering. And I'm fine with that. The pollinators are loving it. I'm leaving it until I want to plant something else, meaning my fall crops. The kale, is it's still doing good. It's getting eaten up a little bit. I actually need to come through here and do a harvest. But there's something new in this bed that I've never told you about. Let me head over there and I'll show you. These are jade beans. I came through here and planted jade beans and I had an excellent germination rate. They're just all through this little garden spot filling in um, the empty spots. So I'm really excited to see those coming up. Now down this north wall, I have, it started out as cabbage and broccoli and it was intended to be my brassica bed. The broccoli's done, it's all pulled out. I need to prep that side of the bed for a new fall crop. The cabbage is still here. We're just setting heads about right now. As you can see, I've got the same cabbage worm damage. And then I have three different zucchinis also in here that I am pruning, but I haven't decided if I'm gonna stake them up yet. I have about four or five sunflowers growing in here. That'll be just a fun touch for the fall. And a few marigolds, or not marigolds, but a few beets that did take hold when I planted beets through here. So this is, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this bed to see its um, maximum potential all the way through my fall gardening. So if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing though, I wanna invite you to Subscribe, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. This is That 1870s Homestead. I'm Rachel, my husband's Todd. We still have more garden to go see though. Let's go take a look. So this bed is the only bed different out of my raised beds. That's probably something I didn't mention when, if you're new to our channel, we do raised bed gardening and no-till gardening. So all the in-ground beds are no-till. They started out as Ruth Stout. This year I changed methods a little bit. But in my raised beds, this one's the only one that's different. And this is peppers and onions, and I have a big perennial sorrel plant. So, but looking in here, I have my first peppers. That's exciting. 
Some of the onions are starting to die back. I typically won't harvest them till late July, but as ones become available, I will harvest those. They're looking great though. I'm getting really nice sized onions already, so that's exciting. Almost the size of a baseball. I'd say it's the size of a baseball around, but not tall yet. Oh my goodness, look at here. Second time I found a volunteer tomato growing in my carrot bed. How about that? I'll show you the other one before we leave. But these are our carrots. I planted two succession plantings of carrots, um, three beds, and then my last two beds. But I'll see if I can't get in here and find you guys one to, to show you that's ready. Sometimes they poke their little heads out of the ground and you know they're all set. Oh gosh, I forgot. I even planted beets in here. <laughs> come, can you come see this, Todd? So you can show them. So that's cool though, because once I pull out the carrots, as long as I don't disturb the beets too much, there's beets in there. How about that? I forgot I did that. That's funny. Well, let's just pull this middle one and see. Oh, it's, don't you just love it when you pull a pair of pants? So darn cute. I'll probably harvest these carrots um, maybe the first week of August, last of July, first of August. I thought I was gonna do it this week, but seeing these, they need a little longer. So other than the flowers growing, we've got borage, poppies, echinacea, daisies. This is our garden in July, and it is part of our food freedom. We put up staples only here in our garden, and we try to maximize the return by high intensity planting. And if you're not growing something where you are today, we truly encourage you to grab a pot, put in a bag of soil and plant something. Talk to you guys later. Mm -hmm.